Good day everyone, so here I am again, Sir Mar, for your virtual instruction for measures of position covering your activity sheets for week 6 to 10 and fortunately, this will be the last virtual instruction for your quarter 4. For this virtual instruction, we will be covering the use of appropriate measures of position and other statistical methods in analyzing and interpreting data. Before we proceed with our main discussion for this virtual instruction, let me just explain that for your activity 1 for week 6 to 7 activity sheets, you just have to recall what you have learned from week 3 of our quarter 4. That would help you in answering activity 1. Just like what we did with your activities in week 4 to 5, which requires the same set of mathematical skills from week 1 to 2 virtual instruction. For our main discussion, let us have this set of data, the scores of 20 students in a math quiz. The scores are as follows. So we have 45, 30, 35, 32, 44, 42, 41, 30, 31, 38, 46, 39, 29, 44, 42, 40, 38, 39, 37, and 35. So we will use this set of data in our discussion which will cover the things that you will need for your week 6 to 10 activity sheets. Now, here are some common problems or questions in your activity sheet. So from the given data we have provided earlier, what is the score associated with quartile 3? Or in other terms, you will be asked upper quartile, lower quartile, or other quartiles, okay? And for the second one, we will have what is the sixth decile of the scores. The third would be what score is at the 78th percentile. And the last one, what is the percentile rank of 36? In order for you to answer those questions, you have to consider some formulas and we have to look back from the formulas from your week 1 to 2 of quarter 4. Your formulas for quartile, decile, and percentile. Okay, and I know that I don't need to enumerate the definitions of the representations in these formulas because I know that you are already acquainted with those symbols and representations. And the one that I am going to introduce to you is the percentile rank formula for group data which you will need in some of the activities in your week 6 to 10. Okay, so the formula we have PR is equal to 100 divided by N times the quantity P minus LB times FP divided by I plus CFP. Okay, so what does the representation here mean? Okay, so we have the first one. PR is the percentile rank. P is the raw score. LB is the lower boundary of the percentile class, FP is the frequency of the percentile class, CFP is the cumulative frequency below the percentile class, and N is the total frequency, and I is the size of interval. Okay? Now that you are already well acquainted about percentile, what does it mean by percentile rank naman? Okay, so it is very simple. If we say just percentile rank, it is the number associated with your percentile. Okay, that's it. Okay, so your 25 would be your percentile rank. Moving on, for us to answer the questions easily, we have to consider this table, okay? I know that you already aware of this table and we have to complete this, okay? Since we are given the set of data, we have to count the frequency which is given in our uh, activity sheet, okay? So we can also see the quiz scores or other types of data in our activity sheets wherein it it is already grouped, okay, from 46 to 50, from 40 to 45, and so on. Okay, so from the set of data we have, we can have the frequency, which will be flashed. These are the total frequency for each of the range we have. 26 to 30 will have 3, 31 to 35 
will have 4, 36 to 40 will have 6, and 40 to 45 will have 6, and 46 to 50 will have 1. Okay, so the next task would be to determine the cumulative frequency. For cumulative frequency, we just have to determine the numbers from the bottom. Okay, so we will have uh, we will have to start with 3. Then we will add the next frequency, which is 4. So we will have 3 plus 4, that would give us 7. 7 plus 6, that would give us 13. 13 plus 6 would give us 19. And 19 plus 1 would give us 20. Okay, that would be a recall for your cumulative frequency. And the next we will have to determine would be the lower boundaries, okay, for each of the interval. This would be the lower boundaries for each of the uh, interval, okay. So how do we determine the lower boundary? You just have to subtract 0 0.5 from the lower boundary set in each of the interval. So we have 26 minus 0 0.5 that would give us 25.5, 31 minus 0 0.5, that would give us 30.5, 36 minus 0 0.5 would give us 35.5, and so on up to 45.5. Okay, so that would be your lower boundary. And the next thing we have to determine is the class size or uh, classes interval or the I. Okay, so we will just have to choose uh, two data from our set of data. So, I choose 35 minus 30 is equal to 5. Pero, sir, paano ba natin ang pipiling dalawang number na yun? You just have to look into two consecutive, okay, at either upper boundary or lower boundary uh, values. So, for example, we have 30, 35, or 35 and 40, 40 and 45, 45 and 50. Pwede yun, okay? Kasi the same lang yung lalabas na answer for your class size interval. Now, to answer our first question, which is the quartile 3, we have to first determine the position of quartile 3, okay? So, I know that you're already acquainted with determining this one. So, the K would be 3 and N would be equal to 20, the total number of frequency we have, okay? So, we will have 3 times 20 divided by 4, which just be equal to 15, okay? And this 15 would be used to determine where we can see the K percentile class, okay? So, from 15, you will just have to look at the cumulative frequency. What is the first cumulative frequency which is greater than 15? That would be 19. Therefore, our percentile class would be at 40 to 45, okay? And since we already know the percentile class, we will now be able to uh, fill out our formula. So, the lower boundary would be 40.5. Your cumulative frequency below your percentile class would be nine, uh, 13. And then, your frequency of the percentile class would be 6. And, and we already know that your KN would be 3 times 20 and your I would be equal to Five, and by substituting those values, we will have this. And with the use of your computational skills or with the use of other mathematical gadgets, we can now determine that our quartile 3 is equal to 42.17. To answer our second question, we just have to apply the process we had earlier. For our decile okay so specifically we are looking for the six decile so we have to determine the position of the six decile which will give us k n over 10 where k is 6 and n is equal to 20 so we will have 6 times 20 is uh, divided by 10 is equal to 12 okay and now we know that the position of our decile 6 is equal to 12 we are going to look for the first cumulative frequency, which is greater than 12. So, 3 is not greater than 12, and obviously 7 is also not. So, we will have 13. And we can now say that our percentile class would be at 36 to 40. Okay, so this would be our percentile class. And we can now use our formula and substitute the needed values so that we can determine our decile 6. Okay, and now we can now have 35.5 to be the lower boundary, 6 times 20 
to be the KN and then minus 7 which is the cumulative frequency below our percentile class and then divided by 6 which is the frequency of the percentile class and multiplied by 5 which is the interval and by performing the computation we can now have the 6 decimal which is equal to 39.67 I hope that you are picking up something from our previous discussion because in this third question that we are going to address you will just have to apply what we had from the first two examples okay so specifically we are looking for the 78 percentile so we will have to determine first the position of the p78 which will give us 78 times 20 divided by 100 which is equal to 15.6 okay so our position of the p78 is equal to 15.6 so we are looking for the cumulative frequency which is greater than 15.6 so the first cumulative frequency which is greater than 15.6 so we will have 19 and therefore our percentile class would be at 40 to 45 okay and by maximizing all the values we will need for this formula we are now going to substitute those needed values to our formula okay so we will have the lower boundary to be equal to 40.5 and our kn would be 78 times 20 just just like what we did earlier and then minus 13 which is the cumulative frequency below our percentile class and 6 which is the frequency of the percentile class and lastly the interval which is 5 and by performing the computation needed for this formula, we can now say that our 78th percentile is equal to 42.67. And that would be for the first three questions, okay? And now we will be using the new formula that you have uh, learned for this virtual instruction for the fourth question. So for the fourth question, we have what is the percentile rank of the score 36? So in order for us to answer this question, we have to use this formula which has been introduced to us earlier. Okay, so how can we determine the values needed for this? So first one, we have to determine in which interval does our raw score lies. Okay, so 36 is in 36 to 40. Therefore, we will be focusing our uh, percentile class to 36 to 40. Okay, and from this, we are going to de determine our P, our LB, FP, CFP, and I and N. Okay, so first, we know already our N and our I, which is N is equal to 20 and I is equal to 5. So first, we have to determine what is P, and that is the raw score, which is 36. And our LB would be 35.5, okay? And our FP would be 6, the frequency of our percentile class. And our CFP or the cumulative frequency below our percentile class would be 7, okay? By substituting the values we have for our formula, we can now have 100 divided by 20 times the quantity 36 minus 35.5 times 6 divided by 5 plus 7. And we will perform first the fractions. Okay, so we will have 100 divided by 20 would be equal to 5. And 36 minus 35.5 would be equal to 0 0.5 times 6 would be 3 divided by 5 would be 0 0.6. And 0 0.6 plus 7 would be equal to 7.6. And multiplying our 7.6 by 5 would give us 38. And that is already our percentile rank, 38. That would be all for our virtual instruction covering your week 6 to 10 activity sheets. I hope that you have earned something from this virtual instruction to help you in accomplishing the last set of your activity sheets for quarter 4 in your grade 10 mathematics.
So before I end this virtual instruction, let me leave you with this quote. Facing challenges with strength, determination, and confidence is what matters. And you have done it. Congratulations, grade 10 students for school year 2020-2021. And we hope as a team, you have earned something from the virtual instructions we have provided for this school year. Thank you for staying with us up to the end of our virtual instruction and God bless everyone.